don't get much preaching around here. You get a lot of good singing. That's worth coming for. We are glad to have the Burden family with us. The other morning, I think I said that he was Tammy's boss. He's Ashley's boss. <clears throat> so get that straightened out. My wife corrected me on that. So if I make something wrong tonight, you'll have to tell me because she's not here. Pray for them, though, that have a safe journey back from Virginia tomorrow, down through the hills of West Virginia. Boy, they got a good crop of hills up there, you know. They, they were spread out and level. They'd be bigger in Texas. That's for sure. They got a bunch of them. Well, I won't hold you long. I think that's what Elizabeth Taylor said about her fourth husband. I uh, won't hold you long. I didn't know if you could laugh or not. I heard that air conditioner running all night long. When we're on fire, I can't hear that. <laughs> in, uh, is it up on the board? You all know more about it than I do. <laughs> then I'll, I'll look around here and find it. No, it's not up there, is it? Okay. Then it's the 46th chapter of Psalms, the 10th and 11th verses. And you preach Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. And Brother Jerry preaches Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And, uh, hmm, somebody talking to me? I didn't think so. I didn't hear anybody. <clears throat> he, be still and know that I am, the, I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. <clears throat> this is not the first time that it looks like to men and carnal minds that God is the loser. And today, when the minds of carnal men are praising the devil and saying that God is the loser, because evil on every side, on every hand, you can make fun of Christians and everybody will be on your side. The government's on your side. Nobody cares. But you say something about Allah, they'll cut your head off. And so that seems to me that they're slaughtering people and cutting their heads off and blood is flowing. But if you read the book of Revelations, it tells us that these people that are beheaded for Christ, the blood shall cry out from under the altar of God. I would rather tonight that my blood cry out from under the altar of God than to be walking through the pits of hell screaming out for the devil. I would, I, that was what I'd like to have tonight. Now I know that people don't understand old fashioned, old time, sin killing, God sent, Holy Ghost preaching and revival and people getting saved. And, but you know what? God didn't change his plan. God said we must be born again. <clears throat> now, I've got two birthdays. One of them be the August 16th if I make it. The other one will be next Friday night, May the 15th. Now, May the 15th, I will have served God 62 years. I've walked with the Lord. But I only walked with God because He was willing to put up with me. Now, there's a lot of people. My wife will be 60 years the 5th of June. I only walk with her because she's willing to put up with me. So I was very fortunate in life to find two people that love me so much they put up with me. And I thank God tonight. Aren't you glad that he loves you so much that he puts up with you? Even when we feel good, when we feel bad, when we're on the mountaintop, when we're in the valley, when we're shouting, when we're complaining, God still loves us so much, He puts up with us. But I thank God tonight, He is a mighty and wonderful God. He is not dead, He is alive, He's on the throne, He's just as real tonight as He was when He spoke the first word in, the, in Genesis. He'll be just as real when the last words are spoken in the book of Revelation. He will still be God. There was a man named Adolf Hitler. He said, I'm going to get a third right, he called it. And I'm going to get an Aryan race. And when I get it to perfection, it will last 1,000 years. 
So 43 months later, Adolf Hitler destroyed his own self. He went down by destruction. You know why? Because he thought that he was bigger than God and he didn't think God would ever catch up with him and he thought he's going to go down in history for something great. Brother, I don't care tonight if I go down in history and, and Tolesboro don't even know my name. Because you know why? I don't want my name in history. I don't want my name up in the marquee lights because I've got my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life and hallelujah, it's been there 62 years almost and 62 years from now it'll still be shining just as bright as it was when the day that God wrote it in there in the blood of Jesus Christ. So tonight, don't be alarmed, don't be dismayed. You know, they talk about it's hard to get to church shout nowadays. Well, when we're feeling good, everything's going right and we're singing to the top of our lungs and boy, the Spirit is moving and Holy Ghost is coming. It's no trouble to stand up, clap your hands and praise God. But how about when everything has gone wrong? You turned on the newscast and it's just getting worse every day. Attacking people in the United States. You get news from the doctor and it's not good. How many can come to church and stand up and say, I'm in the midst of a battle, but praise God, he's my general and I may be in a battle tonight, but tomorrow, somewhere out there, I'm going to have victory because he is still God. He's still on the throne. He's still in command and God is not dead but God is alive. I don't believe that God is alive tonight because somebody said it. I don't believe it because they made a movie about it. I believe it tonight because the Bible says it and his spirit bears witness with my spirit that not only is he alive, but praise the Lord, he is my father. Hallelujah. My earthly father is gone. He's dead. But my godly father is still alive. And you know what he does? He watches over me every day, every moment, every night. When I'm a sleep, when I'm awake, when I'm when I feel good, when I feel bad, when I'm shouting, when I'm doubting, when I'm pouting, he's still there because he loves me. Hallelujah. Now I don't do much doubting and pouting because I don't like that in other people so I don't want to see it. I want them to see it in me. If I don't want to pout or anything I go off myself. I don't want anybody to see it. But I don't, I don't pout about anything. I'm not a powder. And I don't know how to deal with powders. I won't go into that. But I can deal with somebody if they'll come up and say, Preacher, here's what's wrong with me. Here's what's bothering me. But when I come by somebody and they spoke real big last week and next week they just kind of look around and they start to sit down, you know, we don't have any of that around here. Nobody here does that. But I've seen it. I don't know how to deal with that because I just know how to deal with a God that loves us and cares for us, takes care of us. And when I'm down, praise God, I am still up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When I'm down, I'm up. I haven't had any hard times in my life. You don't believe that, do you? You're going to live very long. You're going to have a hard time. It's going to seem like times that, you know, people talk about feeling like being saved. Now, did you ever have a time you felt as lost as a goose in a six-lane highway? You just felt everything was whizzing and moving around you. You didn't feel the Spirit of God. You didn't feel the power of God. And it looked like the whole world was against you and nobody was on your side. But praise God out of the midst of it all. You looked up to Jesus and you said, Lord, I'll reach up and God reached down. And you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that God loves you because the Bible says so. That song the little girl sang, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me because the Bible tells me so. You see, I get by on so many things simply because I believe the Bible told me so. Now, I know that preaching is 